Welcome back to Stitch in Time. This is Jay. I'm here for another lesson on the Brother BES4 embroidery lettering software. Today we're going to be looking at these uh, tools right across the top here and looking at how we would use them in various different ways. And we're going to cover all of them but the monogram as we covered that in a prior lesson. And that's fairly simple. We may, we may cover that again a little bit later. But real quickly, just want to go through this. Today we're going to make a little design that I did up here. BES4 can make your lettering go vertical, go over or under something, sidestep the issue, or spiral absolutely and completely out of control. So I'm going to show you how we do this using these various different tools. So the first thing is the basic lettering is going to be BES4. And actually I'm going to change that font just to match what I had before. We're going to change that to the chalk font. Um, just so that it doesn't confuse anyone out there if they're looking at what we have online. So when we look at this, I'm going to zoom in here just real quick so you can see this. There is uh, some handles here, and the red ones are for for changing the size of something or for, for moving it. Um, so you can distort it, things like that. But the green arrows are always to stretch everything proportionally. So this is changing the height up and down. And the green arrow over here is to stretch the whole thing lengthwise. The orange circle, when you put your mouse over top of it, is for rotation because the circle goes around. And the little blue trapezoid down here is for when you need to italicize something is you put your mouse over top of that and then you can send it racing into the future if you so choose. But we're, we're not going to do that today. We're just going to um, keep everything straight. I just wanted to go over that with you because these handles will be available through almost all of these tools. And it's nice to know what they're for as we're working with them. So I'm going to take this and just set this off to the side here. I'm going to zoom back out here a little bit. And that's just the basic lettering tool. I'm going to turn the 3D on so those of you can see uh, what, we're, what it is we're working with here. I'm also going to go to the next path. The next one is the path tool. And so when you click this, I'm just going to click somewhere in the screen here. And it's going to say, what kind of path do you want? And these are basically shapes that your lettering will go along. Now the difference between this path versus follow the path is that this one creates a shape and as you type it'll just go along that shape whereas when you do the follow path it'll actually fill up the entire path and spread everything out proportionally and so it's a little different between these two i like this one the path tool is a little bit easier than the follow path tool i'm going to use the corner sharp bottom left and as you see it's what it says here and i'm going to change actually i'm going to go i'm going to go in here i'm going to say can make your lettering and we're going to let that let that go right there now this is actually all bunched up here i'm going to zoom in here just a little bit so you can see a little better and as you can see here this is kind of all lumped up here and what if i wanted to change this what if i wanted to change the look of this well, I can click on apply and I now have my lettering here and we can do what we did before. These little diamonds are the ways that you can stretch and move your lettering the whole way along. So I grab the diamond here in front of the, the Y and I can stretch that out there. But what if I wanted to make this leg of the, of the uh, shape longer? Well, it's really simple to do that. And the way you do that is you right click somewhere on the shape here. And you go to this edit baseline. And so you right click on the line, then you go left click on edit baseline. And now what you see, I have these three uh, squares. One, two, three. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this one and just make this a little taller. And I'm gonna make it just slightly angled. And once I get my shape kind of the way I like it, then I right click somewhere out here in the open and it automatically does it. Now you see because I had done that with that Y before that's really making this look goofy here. And so I can do this for several ways. I can take this and oh that's going to be too close in there. So there's several things I can do here. I can change the size of my lettering if this is exactly the same height I want or 
I can lower this back down again. So I'm going to take this, oh, let's just change the height of the lettering a little bit here. I'm going to bring this down to uh, 0.60. And so now you can say, I can, I can put in there, can make your, and I'm going to take lettering and change it down to here. There we go, can make your lettering. And so now if I zoom back out here, I can see how this works here. I grab my select tool and I can move this up here. And just for fun, I'm going to change this to a different color. Let's zoom in just a little bit just so you can see that. Oh, actually, we'll do this zoom everything. Okay, so now you can see that that is how you can use the shape tool and you can change the, the basic tenets of the shape while you're working with it. One of the things that I should also point out here is that if, if you need to go back and tweak this some more, I don't have all those handles here. To get all those little controls here, I simply have to click on the same button up here when it's selected, and it gives me all those handles back. And again, I can right-click on it, edit baseline, and I could, I could change this out here as, as well again. So I can take this and put this up here. Now, one of the other things is that this is why it is so important to save your design in, in the... Um, BES format or the BSR format because that way it allow you to come back and tweak these later should you want to. I should also point out there's one more thing you can do here. You can also right click on a spot and add a point. And what that does is that enables you to add something in this and control this. And those of you who have worked with graphics programs know these are called, um, I think they're called Beezers. And so thus we can take this and we can change this and make, make, make our gradients. We can do anything we want in here. Um, but if I wanted to do this, something like this, and then right click in there, and there we go. But for the sake of today, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put it back here. Actually, I might change this um, and bring this up here just a little bit so that it looks, looks a little bit more of a right angle. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we're going to... So that's how you can make your lettering follow a shape. The next one is follow a path. And I'm just going to show you what this is and then I'm going to delete it because this works very similarly to this one. And I'm just going to open up a new tab here just, um, just so you can see how this works. But if I were to take the exact same pattern, and there's lots of different shapes in here that you can do, but if I was to take this exact shape, same pattern, and go make your lettering do this notice how it's always trying to fit everything in here and this one does not give you as many controls over what you can do with it so notice how when I'm when I right click on it to make it complete I can go in here and manually move some of these but they're not tied together near as much as what they are in the other program because this is looking at the size that you want and going to try and make everything fit in there and so the only way you would be able to work with this is if you change your size down so if i take this and i make my lettering all smaller then i can get it to fit in here but notice i, I have a little harder time doing this this is nice if you wanted to pull out a um a wave pattern or something like that and you wanted to, to have a certain line or a certain phrase um, ride the wave and then I can go into here and change my height to well, let's say about a 50 And thus, I know that my whole design is going to end up being about three and three quarter inches long, as you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner. But that's how I can know to make sure it's going to fill that whole shape, um, not just a certain portion of it. So that's kind of the difference between the follow um, path and just the regular path. The path you can tweak and make it and change it. The follow path is kind of fixed in place and it's going to fit whatever you text you have to that size and space. Vertical is really simple. I'm going to go up here a little bit, and I'm going to click on vertical. And it says, we're going to say go. Oh. 
vertical. And I'm going to just going to um, and then click apply. Change this color here to be something different, just for kicks and giggles. I should get a different um, something different in there. Now again, notice when I'm working on this that I have the same controls here, so I can rotate this whole thing. I can also change my height. And you can see, obviously, that this is too tall. I can change my width of the lettering. And that's how we can very quickly get our design right where we want it to be. I'm just going to do that just a little bit, just to make it look like I am I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to make that run parallel to this one over here. So that's how you can make it go vertical. And again, you have the same tools. I can say, I don't want quite so much space in here. So I can click that little diamond. The diamond is what moves everything. And I can give it more space, or I can give it less space. And there you go. The next tool on our list up here is the circle. And I'm going to just go over here a little bit. And I'm going to go circle. And I just click here. Now when it clicks up, it brings this big circle here. Just don't worry about the circle right now. On the right hand side, you're going to see uh, your font. And you're going to see font. Uh, the, you're going to see two lines here: upper text, lower text. And so we can have up here, go over or under. And so I'm going to take. I'm going to change this again to about like a 65, um, because that's what's going to work best for the design we're working on here. And so now, when when you look at this, I have this thing that says over, go over or under. Well, I want to make this a little smaller circle up in here. Now, if you notice, there's a little orange thing. That's a circle. That's what controls the size of my circle. So if I pull that towards the middle, I'm going to move this off to the side here so you can see what I'm talking about. Notice that there's a crosshairs right in the middle. As I pull it closer to it, it makes it... Uh, go there. If I go to the left, it rotates my whole design to the left. If I go to the right, it does the same thing as well. So that's where if I can go over or under. And I'm going to again do something a little different here. Let's, let's put that in red. And that's uh, one of the handy tools here. Now there's another circle above it, and that is what changes the size of my lettering. So it's a very quick way of con controlling the whole size of my lettering right there. And again, I have my same diamonds here. I can move these things closer, farther apart. I can uh, do, it's called kerning in the, in the um, newspaper world. And we can get, so we can get the letters exactly where we want them to be. The next one is the step text. And... I'm going to click up in here, and I'm going to change my font to a run font, just because it's a little easier to read at the um, at the size that I'm doing here. <clears throat> By the way, if you only want to see certain types of fonts, there's you can go font category, and you have all your applique fonts, all your run fonts, which are straight lines. You know they don't have any satin stitches your scripty fonts, or your tiny micro fonts. You can have it to, to isolate all of those. So if you click on just your run fonts, it's going to only show you the, the fonts that are all designed to run that way. So let's just do a, um, a Jax in here. We're going to make this size 50, and we're going to say sidestep out of or sidestep the issue and then we can click apply and so now you can see this is what we can do now one of the things I have found is that it does not give me a lot of control as to how much slope I have here you know I've tried and I, uh, I can't find 
an awful lot here, but I do have an angle here that I can change. And so this is currently at a 45 degree angle. And so you do have a, a, an adjustment over here that you can do. And let's say I want only want that at, at a 30 degree angle. I can apply that. And that is how we can make this um, change some of that. But it doesn't give you the nice little handle here that we are, that we are used to with our other ones. So we can sidestep the issue. And then, like I said, the monogram is just, I'll, I, I'll show that in a little bit in a different one. And then there is the spiral text. And the spiral text is, is kind of fun. It looks like the little seashells you find down around the seashore. I'm going to go back here to chalk, uh, which is what we were doing earlier. I'm going to change my size to 65 or 65. And we're going to say, or spiral absolutely and completely out of control. And then click apply. And so now you can see I have this whole thing in here. Now I'm going to actually make that font just a little bit bigger for the sake of what we're doing here. Because I want you to be able to see what's happening. So I'm going to click up apply and let's get this over into the middle of the screen now one of the things is notice that i don't have a lot of control here and i can rotate this around in a circle um but and so i, I can choose where i want it to start I also have this little black button. It's a little hard to see. You'll be able to see it easier on your screen. A little black button. And, what, as, and that is where as I pull it in towards the center, it makes the corkscrew tighter. If I pull it out, it makes it looser. And so this is, a little, this is kind of nice if you want to fit it tight into something. And there we go. Or spiral absolutely and completely out of control. So that's where um, you can work with that. Now, again, if I want to try and unscrew that a little bit, I just simply click this, go up back up here, and, and cl actually click on Select up here, and then click on my spiral text, and I should have my black button there, and again, I can make this work for me there. Well, that kind of gives you an overview of what we can do with some of the lettering tools. I'm just going to show you real quickly the monogram tool. It's not... Um, I like this, but I, I also like the um, the monogram designer better, uh, and I showed that in another video. But I'm just going to show you real quickly the monogram um, one here as well. You have two different styles of monograms, an arched, um, right? you have different ones up here uh, that you want to choose, and you can choose whatever different types of things you want here. Um, what kind of decors do you want to have? And... Um, and, I, and then what letters do you want? And again, you want your first let name letter, your last name letter, and your middle name initial. Um, and then you click Apply, and that's a quick way of, of making a monogram. We might do a little more of that in another one if we get more requests for that. So what do you think? There you go. We have... Um, we have the whole thing. BS4 can make your lettering go vertical, go over or under, sidestep the issue, or spiral absolutely and completely out of control. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next lesson.